what I wanted to share with you was this amazing uh, story of Blessed Hannah Chernowska. And she is a nurse that lived in 1902, or she was born in 1902, and she was quite a remarkable woman on her own right. Her parents were Polish, she is Polish, and her father was the head of the department of the Allegonian University in Literature. These are some childhood photos of her. And here she is as a nurse in her early nursing class. And this is her on the end right here. In 1910, her family moved permanently from Warsaw to Krakow. And after she uh, progressed, she went to the Ursuline College for her high school uh, and graduated with honors. And then from 1922 to 1924, she actually graduated from the first Warsaw School of Nursing that was started by her very wealthy aunt. Her family was very well-to-do, and they were tremendous uh, benefactors to many great causes. Here, is she, here she is on one of her um, charges, with one of her charges as a nurse. This is one of the nursing classes, and again, she's on the left-hand side here. And I noticed in, when I was reviewing all these photos, um, a month ago, I just realized the peacefulness of her face. That's, it really struck me. Here she is when she's a, a little bit older nurse. And what I love about this picture up here, she's just so normal. This is community nursing in Poland. And she just really taught all of her students because she was teaching at the Krakow School of Nursing. And these are her, uh, this, this is a student here, and this is her older, uh, when she's a little bit older and still working as a nurse. She was the editor-in-chief of the Polish <clears throat> Journal of Nursing and wrote several articles and also co-authored with other nurses procedures for nurses. She also loved poetry. She wrote a couple of novels that were based on fiction, but she really loved the arts and was quite a hiker. It kind of reminds me of St. John Paul. She loved the outdoors. And so this is one of her, uh, one of the photos when she was hiking with some of her friends. This is the Yalagonian University in Krakow where her father was this is the great hall and during the war all the professors were called in there when the communists came and they were told to report nazis i'm sorry when the nazis came and they were told to report here and her father who was then elderly at the time however was the head of that department for years decided to go even though he didn't what happened was the nazis rounded them all off up and took them to a concentration camp for over three months and her father died in the concentration camp and three weeks after he died they were all the professors were liberated so it was pretty bittersweet and they had tremendous difficulty getting his body back uh, but they did this is Hannah's only brother he was also in the army and he was rounded up with other Polish officers and they were shot in the forest so she went through some tremendous um, heartbreaks. She, she's here, uh, she's the one in the middle. During the war, Krakow was occupied, so she was told to get out of her apartment and was given like three hours notice to pack her stuff up and leave so the officers could take her place. She called some friends and they let her live in the apartment for two years till the end of the war. She continued with nursing, and here she is a speaker 
here in New Jersey and here at Columbia University. She actually came to the United States a few times and would speak about nursing and community nursing and it was remarkable that she could make such a journey during those times after the war. When the war finally stopped, here is the Carmelite monastery that was in front of her home, this apartment that she didn't ever regain the original, but this was her apartment and she would go to be a community nurse as the head of the department and go to daily mass every day. And then the sisters would say on days when she would come home exhausted, she would go there for prayer and they would actually give her dinner because she was too tired to cook. This is a photo when she was in charge of the Krakow College of Nursing and she is the one right here in the middle. Obviously very, very happy with her nursing students and I think this is a wonderful photo that really shows um, how much she, you can tell in her eyes, her dedication. She received several medals of honor from the Polish government and she also received an honor from Pope Paul VI. And these are some of her medals. In, <clears throat> in the late uh, 1950s, 1951 exactly, this is the Tinitz Abbey in Poland that's about 10, 15 miles outside of Krakow. And she became a Benedictine oblate at this monastery. And I had the privilege of visiting this monastery uh, when I was in Poland a few weeks ago as I'm helping another British author finish a book on her uh, that would have more photographs. So she became a Benedictine oblate and she began in 1951 and then in 1955 she began nurses retreats. Well, the Nazi government did not like what she was doing communist government at that point, did not like what she was doing. And so they basically closed the School of Nursing in Krakow to get rid of her and said, oh, well, we're gonna assign you if you wanna go as the director of the um, psychiatric asylum that's out of town, you can do it. So she said, yes, I'll go. So from 1957 to 1958, she was the director of the psych, psych nursing program at the, at the asylum. And in 1957, she directed the first annual pilgrimage of nurses to the Shrine of Our Lady of Czestochowa. Well, this infuriated the government. So they closed the School of Nursing at that point at the asylum to get rid of her, okay? So she was forced into early retirement and she got an idea, well, she really wanted to work. And so she thought because of the conditions that were so terrible with the socialized medicine, etc., she went to this priest here who said, well, I have a, another priest that can really help you, which happened to be Father Carol Wartia. Okay, here he is very young as a parish priest. So she asked then father, soon to become Bishop Boitia, then soon to become the Cardinal, would come on my nursing rounds. And this is what she showed him. And this is Hannah here on the right, taking coal and lighting the fire. And the coal was donated by the parish because her patients had no money for coal to keep warm. And so this is how she found these patients. She went on a one day visit to 35 patients, which I can't even imagine, okay, over a one or two day period to show um, St. John Paul just exactly what was the conditions in Krakow at the time. This is one of her patients. This is another one of her patients. And the author of the book, Colors of Fire, which you may have heard Dr. Gosha came uh, to Our Lady of the Elms and also to the National Shrine of Divine Mercy and gave testimony. This is actually her aunt who worked with Blessed Hannah. 
So as time progressed, you can see here, she's now, this is Hannah on the right here, and this is her here, here as well, but you can see she's with Cardinal Wojtyla, and he's still very involved in her work, even though it's in the gutters, it's, it's everywhere, and the parishes treated through the organization of parish nursing that Hannah started, over 600 patients. And the, Hannah's wide circle of friends, she told other nurses about it. She told students about it because they needed them to, for manpower to move the wheelchairs. Because some of these people, they hadn't been out of their apartments in 10 years. There was no elevators and no one to carry them up and down. And the idea of receiving the sacraments was out of the question. So she was the one that organized this with the help of St. John Paul, who was the, then the cardinal at the time. And you can see uh, Cardinal Wotia here. Here's Hannah. And she's with a group of some of her patients and some of the volunteers. She then started to have retreats for nurses and then subsequently started having retreats for patients. And there's one, uh, one entry that she was talking, she, she recorded that one of these patients that the volunteers had carried down and it was raining and the, the woman was crying. And she said, well, why are you crying? What's wrong? What can we do? And she said, I haven't felt rain on my face in over 10 years. They haven't been out. So this, this is the kind of ministry she had. And here's some of the volunteers getting the patients into the Carmelite monastery so they could go to mass. Hannah had a serious GYN problem, and in 1966 she had surgery, and she thought she was going to die, and she wrote a letter, said, on the envelope, upon my death, please give this to Cardinal Wojtyla. Well, of course, he received it. She ended up living for quite some time after this surgery, but she did expire in 1973. She died on Divine Mercy Sunday, April 29th, 1973. Of course, Divine Mercy Sunday hadn't been declared yet. But when I told Father Kaz about this, he immediately looked it up and we both confirmed that and then found out, yes, the Krakow Nurses Association knew that as well. So here's the Cardinal. There were so many wheelchair patients and so many people that gave to her funeral. It was just incredible. And here you can see uh, the Cardinal was supposed to be in Chestahova for the gathering of Cardinals. He said, I'm not coming. And he presided at her funeral mass and also went to the cemetery and buried her himself. And just before he died, he spent the last day with her and everybody got out of the room and he spent the whole day talking to her. And then they told me that he would run to the door and say, oh, she needs something. Somebody come in quickly and help her. So she needed water. And Cardinal Waitia himself helped reposition her in her bed during her final days. And this is a picture of Hannah, Blessed Hannah, as in her older age. And this is one of the nurses on the right that worked with Blessed Hannah. And this is Dr. Gosha Brzezinski, who actually wrote the first books in English about Blessed Hannah, Colors of Fire. And we will be having that publication um, very soon as she asked the Marian Fathers to publish her books. So here's some members of the Krakow Nurses and Midwives Association. They're at her grave. And finally, after 25 years after her death, they had a conference about her. And then they said, you know, we have to do something. And so they asked the priest what to do. And the priest at the time told them, if you don't bring her cause, nobody will. So the nurses got together, the Catholic nurses and midwives of Krakow, which is a professional association, gathered all of the documents together and presented it to Cardinal Mikarski. Her, Hannah's work continued, and this is what the community nurses looked like, as you can see. And they finally moved her remains from the cemetery to St. Nicholas Church, which is here, 
and you can see some of the nurses praying and these are her holy remains. This is Hannah when she was at one of the conferences. Somebody snapped the photo. You can see how much she enjoyed her work. Uh, after her death, this is a hospice hospital for children that was named after her. And then suddenly there became more books, more pamphlets. This was by uh, Dr. Gosha who is a professor of nursing education in London, and she's, her parents were Polish, so of course she speaks per perfect Polish, and she was also teaching nursing in Krakow at the Yalagonian University where nursing was elevated to. So, her be the Blessed Hannah's beatification was April 29, 2019, at the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy, uh, 2018, I'm sorry, 2018, it's actually last week, I think it's still jet lag. Um, 2018, and what the beautiful thing is, this nurse right here, um, she worked with Blessed Hannah as a student when she was 16 or 17 years old. And she said she had three or four patients, she taught her what to, to do what, with the patients, and then would leave and then a week later she would have to report back into her they would go back out on a community nursing visit and go from there so this is the beautiful um, painting that they did of blessed Hannah and you can see Helena and two little children are placing the relics there and unbelievably I was invited as the only nurse from the United States that went to the beatification um, to represent the healthcare professionals for Divine Mercy, the Catholic Nurses Association here in the United States. Um, on the left hand side is Dr. Gosha, who is a professor of nursing, as I mentioned, and Geraldine, who is the international president of the Catholic Nurses Association and we were privileged to be able to bring the lamps up after the relics and place them on the altar. Cardinal Malto was presiding and you can see the veneration and the blessing of the relics. <coughs> and I'm just putting a few pictures in here so you can see the nurses color guard. The nurses came from all over Poland and this is just, just breathtaking to see this and I'm on the top of the balcony here looking down and if you look on the right side you, I'm going to give you another photo these are all priests that came to concelebrate there was roughly 800 priests that came from all over Poland to concelebrate there's the nurses color guard on the right and you can see this huge number of concelebrants I'm very proud of the nurse's color guard. <laughs> and here's a photo of Father Seraphim and I. <laughs> Father Seraphim and I have literally traveled around the world for the last, since 1984. And this, I think, is just one of the most precious photos. It was a great honor to be there. So I want to close with one, I, I kept looking on the picture that they had. And of course, everybody around me is speaking Polish. I forgot to ask Gosia, what does this say? So I typed it into Google, and it says, the nurse's examination of conscience. Well, she wrote this. And there's at least 17 pages that go with this. So I'm, I just pulled out a couple of uh, beautiful points that she makes. I'm a nurse. I'm a Catholic. Can I say with a clear conscience I'm a Catholic nurse? Do I neglect Holy Mass, complaining I have too much fatigue? How, much of the, of, how many of us have been there? We're too exhausted? What's my attitude towards a sick person? Do I, get a con do I get, have a constant conscious effort not to fall into dryness and routine? Do I pray for the sick and all entrusted to my care? What's my attitude towards dying patients? Maybe there was no one with the family with them. Did I go in the room and, and spend time? 
And the, the document further says, or did I just leave and not do anything? How did I treat the religious matters of the sick? Did I care for them? Did I do everything in my power that a seriously ill patient receives the holy sacraments? Did I baptize infants threatened with death? What was my collaboration with the hospital chaplain? Did I facilitate his work by providing, if possible, peace in the patient's room, providing explanations and sharing insights? I will have the final version of the nurse's examination of conscience finally translated. Right now, three Marian priests are working on it. And the document is so important, Father Seraphim said, even one word has five meanings in Polish, so we couldn't finish it, obviously, in time for this conference. But Hannah, in my mind, is the ultimate nurse. So during the ceremony, Father Seraphim called me over because we were sitting very close to each other. And the Divine Mercy image, the light struck the image just at the right time. And then this beautiful light, ray of light on Blessed Hannah. And I just have to say thank you to her. So I really wanted to bring her spirituality, even though we don't have all these documents translated. But please Google her name, and you'll find it on the Polish website in English that Gosha <laughs> translated. So I want to close with this and thank you very, very much, everyone, for coming and making this the 14th year of blessings. I want to thank Father Kaz and Father Seraphin for being here. Because without the Marians, we would not have anything.